Hey everybody, so for this week's project, I'm gonna be teaching you a quick little Photoshop trick that we can use to clone ourselves, so to speak. So as you saw in some examples, hopefully from the artist that I included the video for above, um, you can do this for a lot of different creative effects. Uh, so let me just go ahead and tell you about how I got started. So in this folder, I have two different photographs. And let me open these up together so that you can get a look. So the way that I started, and uh, before we ever get into anything in Photoshop, it's important that you take two very specifically controlled photos. And the first thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is we're taking our photos in a way where we have it set up on a tripod or in another stable location so that you're not moving the camera in between shots. So uh, I took two, you will have a minimum of two photos that you'll take. You can obviously take more than that if you want to clone yourself more times. Um, but the first thing that you need to know Make sure that you use a tripod or another stable, you know, sort of setup in order to take photos so that you don't have any movement in the camera between shots. Um, they make little tripods designed specifically for smartphones these days, um, but I think I did this one just by clipping a couple of those black little binder clips onto the bottom of the phone and just kind of setting it in place. Um, the second thing that I did was to set a, a, a timer for about 10 seconds so that I could click the button get out in front of the camera and get into position before it snapped that photo. Uh, the third thing that I did that you might be surprised to learn you can do is I used the headphones for my phone uh, as a remote shutter button. So if you just plug in your headphones and they have those kinds of buttons that you use to adjust the volume or to answer a call, if you click one of those buttons, most phones in your camera app will register that as a signal to click the shutter. So that's what I did. Those were three really simple things I did to make sure that my shots were well composed and that the uh, there was no movement in between taking shots. Okay, so once I've got that done, I've got two great photos that I want to use. Uh, I've got them both highlighted in a folder. I'm just gonna go ahead and open with Photoshop. And this should pop up two different documents. We can see this one here is me kind of in the background of the photo. And then the other one is me more in the foreground. So what we want to do, we'll just go ahead and grab the one that is nearest to the camera, the foreground photo. And I'm going to click Command and A. And we can see that has brought up a lasso kind of shimmering around our entire picture um, that uh, means that it's selected. The other thing that I did right there was I clicked the little lock button just to make sure that that layer is unlocked. Um, and now what we're going to do, we're going to either just copy by either clicking Command and C, or you can go up to Edit and then click Copy here as well. Um, and what that's done, it's copied that whole image to our clipboard. And if we go into our other image document, I can just Command V or Edit and Paste, and it will pop right on top and you can see that this has happened because now we have two different layers we have layer one which is me in the foreground and if i take the visibility off that you can see layer one our background with me in the background is now visible um, so from here on out it's really a pretty simple process what i need to do is just keep the parts of our top layer here uh, where i have my feet up on the desk and i'm reading my calvin and hobbes book and get rid of everything else and so this is a really pretty simple approach. What I'm going to do, you learned uh, our quick selection tool last year, last week when we were correcting images, but this can be useful in um, selecting out objects and creating a really quick mask. We used masks as well, and I'll show you how that's done. So I've got my quick selection brush here, uh, and I'm just going to start painting in uh, the figure of myself in the foreground. And so I'm going to include uh, a little bit of the chair too, because I'm not quite sure if I kept that in the same position. Uh, but I'm just going to do my best. So there you see I've grabbed a little too much. I can probably make sure I go to the shoes. And I'm going to start cleaning up my selection now. So there's little bits that got uh, added that I need to subtract. So again, you can click Option and the little plus sign in the middle of your uh, cursor, your brush cursor, will turn to a minus. And that means we can subtract from our uh, selection. So let's do that up here. Right around the bookshelf. Let's make sure we go back to the plus sign, release control option, and get all of that book. Get rid of this little bit that just jumped in, get the edge of that book. 
See, it keeps wanting to select too much, so then I can go back in with, with the Option key depressed and just get rid of some of that. And then here on the back of the head, along the shoulder line, it grabbed all of this stuff. So let's just go ahead and I think pretty quickly I can get rid of this stuff here. And a little bit at the bottom of the chair as well. Um, let's zoom back out and see what this looks like. Again, I can press Q and see what my selection looks like. It looks like one thing I might want to do is actually grab some of the desk because I'm going to have some weird shadows and reflections. I don't want it to look like I'm kind of floating in space. Um, so I'm going to actually grab some of that surface of the desk, maybe even here where I see the shadow of my feet there. Um, I'm going to select that a little bit. And I think that that's going to be pretty good. So uh, here, all I need to do, I've got my selection. I've got everything that I want to keep selected and everything that I don't want to erase or that I don't want to keep that's going to be erased when I click Q is highlighted in red, and we can see that'll be cut out. Um, so with my top layer now selected, I'm gonna go and click this little button here uh, that will create a mask. It's got the little rectangle with a black circle in the center, and that's created a quick mask. And magically like that, it's created this little cutout. We remember using masks in our adjustment layers last time when we were rescuing photos. Well, you can use them to, say, to different effects when you're using them on image layers as well. So we can see here, my mask has everything in black that I wanted to cut out, and it's taken my selection and uh, created a white kind of transparent effect on that, allowing that to be seen through. So it's really as simple as that. You can see it's a pretty decent seamless effect. Um, you can do this multiple times, as we see here. I've only done it twice, but I could find other ways to clone myself in maybe this corner of the room or even handing something in from the outside edge of the frame. Um, you know, you really just have to kind of use your own creativity to figure out how you might use this effect. So take a look at this example. Um, look at Nicholas Bruno's examples, the artist that I showed above, and also some of the student examples that I've included, and see if you get kind of inspired to do something on your own. Um, as always, this can be a little bit of a tricky process, so if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, and you should be able to get into Photoshop either on your own, and if that's not possible, uh, you can go visit our lab in 2960 Doudna. Um, all right, well, have fun. Let me know if you have questions, and we'll see you next time.